Lesson two, techniques for selecting artwork. This lesson provides an overview of selecting objects, anchor points, as well as different ways to align them. By the end of the lesson, you should have a better understanding of what shapes are composed of, anchor points, and how to select and move group um, and align them. We brushed on a little of this yesterday, um, last lesson, and we'll continue learning that and building on that information. Uh, I already went over the direct selection tool, the difference between the hollow or white tool and the solid tool. Solid tool, you can go into group and direct selection, you can go into parts of a group. Sections of a Bezier curve. I've started a Pinterest board specifically for this class. Um, I've supplied the link in this week's lesson. One key thing that's not going to show up in our um, illustrator manual that I wanted to go over is an explanation of what a Bezier curve is. This Wikipedia is one of the pins in the Pinterest board and it shows basically the mathematical explanation of how these vector art or Bezier curves is built. Without getting into the math of it, this little interactive video shows very well how you handle points in uh, Illustrator, like how you handle the handles, that little green line that's moving up there at the top, that is the handle curve and you sometimes it's a bit like driving a car you're pulling in opposite directions of where you want to go well actually that'd be more like a sailboat where you turn the rudder in the opposite way you want to go it seems really counterintuitive but this is how they work and another way to control them very well is to turn and click a point into like an um into more of a uh of an of an anchor point or an angle point so that everything's just not sort of moving all over at the time so this is sort of fast and loose it's uh, sort of going all over the place now if I want to control that a little better I can go into my anchor point tool which is apparently buried alive in this list of added features and we want to get into our corner, um, I can find this for you here. So you're not the only one who is learning new things when they've shuffled everything around. Okay, so your anchor point deletion tool is part of your pen tool. And this, um, we want to be able to go in directly and just work with certain points. So let me undo this shape of his. So if you go in here and you need to del delete certain points, because if you zoom in very, very close, you'll see there's a little glitch here in the robot's head. These are always, the culprit's always gonna be little extra points. So if you do, um, if you delete, I'm holding option means minus, Delete a point and it'll start to smooth this line up. You've got to hit right where the anchor hit is and see my little minus sign that goes, now I'm deleting that. See how it's smoothing it out. Now, I'm very much zoomed in so you can't totally see how that's affected the shape, but it's very minuscule. But it is very important if you were going to enlarge this and this was going to be on a billboard or something. Little nuances, um, I'm in here at 1200%. Um, and from far away, you can't really see it. But if I delete that, you'll see how it's smoothing out that line. There's a little less of this r r r jaggedy business, okay? You've got to be careful which ones you delete, though, now. Maybe you want his head to be more roboto, but then you need to do that on the other side as well. So this is what I mean about what you're selecting, what is selected is affected, meaning, you know, maybe you want him to be asymmetrical. And there I'm just playing with the handles. See, this is what I mean about the, the, the rudder of the sailboat, if you've ever driven one. So you're pulling that way, and it's affecting that opposite. And you can extend. I'm pulling long, and I'm pulling short. It affects the angle and the, the, the length, essentially, of the line. The wider I'm getting, the longer that line and or curve becomes. 
So you, I'm going to Command-Z, and you can keep stepping back. This is a newer thing of the last few versions. Uh, you can keep stepping back. Or if you look at Window, um, History, um, where is your History panel in this one? You can keep stepping back, or Actions. You can keep going back all of these different steps that you've gone. And... Um, just keep saying Command Z. I think there's some sort of uh, edit undo to like a hundred and something at, at, at this point. It used to be limited and it would start forgetting um, how many, it, it would forget how many steps you made. But don't, no worries because now you can, um, you can just keep undoing. But this, I'm, I'm happy with the way the shape's going on there. Um, you'll notice this neck is in front. Um, maybe you want to move that behind and play with some of your layers over here. Uh, I don't know why exactly this is. When you reorder things, the thing that is in front, now that's a dangerous move because we've lost the eyes, but as long as we know where they are. So I'll say edit, redo reorder, and then I'll go grab the eyes and I'll move them above. So essentially I'm moving my layer. And I want those to be in front of, here, let me make these a little bit bigger. So if you say panel options, I can say large. And then you can see what's in there a little bit better. I know everything's a little micro mini when you're watching the demo. But on your screen, if you make these large, and this way you're not sort of guessing, oh, well, those two circle ovals must be my eyes on my robot. Sorry, I'm trying to expand this palette. Not you. Um, make this a little wider so you can see, if you see this little line, I'm getting some reverb here. That's not supposed to happen, that little blinking thing. Um, if you look here, and if you keep extending these palettes, everything will collapse a little bit. Um, you can just say, close these. If, you're, if you don't want to have so many, so many palettes open. So here you can see in these thumbnails, here's the eyes. Now that I've made that, again, Menu, Panel Options, Large. Here you can see what you're dealing with. So let's say I didn't want that neck to show. So I've gone ahead and put that behind. I've changed the shape of the head. Not quite sure why we've got this um, on this palette. But let's say we're missing a few of these. I'm going to select these. I have, I'm not doing the uh, exercise carte blanche, but let's say we select this guy, say copy, oops, don't X, select the whole thing, copy or cut, so you know you've got the whole thing, and then paste. There's always many ways to do anything, so there's no one right way or wrong way. Um, as long as you get the result that you are looking for and you don't uh, mess anything up or damage what is pre-existing already, we could evenly space these here because you see it's a little tight. So it looks like his like robot teeth are off there in his mouth. You could space those out, align them. You could reorder. Now this one's more like that. If you want it to really look that way, this one is a little bit smaller. Anyway, these are just some examples, not to get too granular real quick just how you can control things there. So now I'm doing a group selection. I'm dragging my arrow, making sure all things are selected. I'm going up here to my alignment and I'm clicking even spacing, which is these are spaced even, oops, not that way. And if you hit the wrong one, just say undo. We want to distribute these out. So this gives more of a rhythmic feel you're learning a, a new visual language, just like with words you communicate. Now we have some symmetry here and some even spacing, and it's just a little more, uh, it's a little bit more sensible and beautiful. And now all of these, we're gonna say Command G group, so they all come together, and they're all in the front, because you see how some of those guys were behind there. Um, you could pick up this, ungroup this uh, robot hand, object, 
I did the quick key, sorry, command uh, shift G. So it's G, command shift G is group on group. Then you can put this in front to match that. And that layer happens to be in front. Maybe this is a little too close now. So I'm going to group these. Again, do you follow your own exercise. I'm just giving a few demos of things. Okay, there's that. Um, you know, do your own thing. Have fun with it. Again, undo, group. Oops. Groups, command G. Bring these in the front. They're um, hiding. So we'll say object uh, range, bring to front as well is another choice. You can, so that's another example of how you can do things multiple ways in Adobe software. So you can futz around and find that in the preview. And then also you can come over here, group and say object arrange. So that's the same approach, the same result, different approach. So he's a little cross-eyed, but makes him kind of funny and cute. Um, so these are things you could do. Um, Maybe he's holding a little robot piece here from somebody else or that we could make it into a taco. <laughs> Anyways, have fun with what you're doing. Um, or we could just leave that over there and delete that artboard. Um, and that piece of art. Because I'm happy with the shape of his head. And I showed you a few tricks and techniques. I'm seeing, seeing a little bit more of these sort of glitchy. Let's go to our command Y, see what we've got, direct selection tool. It's only one anchor, so we could in theory just adjust, make it a little smoother. What you do on one side, you wanna do on the other just for um, symmetry. See how there's this sort of glitch and it's not a fluid nice line. Go in there and make that a smooth transition and that was with this Bezier curves and the handles. Back to command Y. And now I have a robot who's fairly um, put together. And I think I've demoed everything you need to know. Um, hiding and locking layers, get into that. This little eye icon, you can see it. Now you see it, now you don't. It's there either way. Um, and you can click on a layer, you can lock. Um, I believe it's command L, no. And you can turn this on, the lock, you can just press this button that looks like a little lock. So you've got a I C, you've got lock. Locking is for when things get pretty hairy scary and you see how many layers we're getting that we didn't build all these, but at some point you wanna be able to like lock his mouth because it's too many things you might hit. Let's say this gradient, you wanted to affect it and there's more layers. Locking that, then you can't go and accidentally move it um, or select. See how it doesn't select when I drag and drop over, but the other pieces that are not locked do. So that's key. And give it a shot. Let me know if you have any troubles and try and do the review. All the answers are there, you can see, but essentially, you need to um, see if you've grasped it so you can build because uh, Adobe Classroom in a book is very much built on building your information. If you succeed in one exercise, then you can continue on and uh, move on to the next exercise. So. Mm.